very, I'm going to use the word curious first because I think that right. curious is curiosity is probably the most synonymous word to intelligence that there is. Interesting. Um, because think about, it, I mean, well, like curiosity leads you to seek if knowledge. I'm, I mean, you're going to figure something. <laughs> I, I mean, if you're, if you're. Wait, but so anyways, he was. I was saying that, like, um, about like the stroking thing, dude. I feel like it's just like very, uh, like phone sales is just like it's raised my bullshit meter. And so when I watch content that's overly, um, like overly, like. Yeah, dude. Like, you know what I, I mean, you. dude? Like, I it's feel you on that. everything. There's, 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 everything is like and subscribe, dude. Everything is like and subscribe. Yeah. I, and it's I feel just you on like, that. fuck. And where you're like, hey, if, like, if I feel like I got something from this, you don't need to tell me to like and subscribe. Now, it's a. It's a tactic. It's a well. It's a reminder. It, it's a cool it's a reminder. reminder. It's a tactic, and usually I like it. Bef- like I like it if you can do it clever. If you can be clever, there's a couple people that I listen to that, um, that will like weave it in. Yeah. At a certain point, that like they've just like blown my mind, and then they're like, yeah, like and there's they, a lot of content. And they do it with wit, and they're like, hey, by the way, blah 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 blah, hit that button. I go, you know what, man, I will. Even better, I like when the ad is started. Like the built-in ad to the video, mm-hmm. but I didn't know the ad has already started. Like, um, there's a guy I I watch called It's Rav for like League of Legends stuff, okay. and he will like make like a raid Shadow Legends joke mm-hmm. in his content, and then all of a sudden you're watching a raid Shadow Legends commercial, <laughs> and you're like, "How am I watching this commercial, dude?" And like, I love that stuff, right? So I like content creators getting their money. Because you appreciate the creativity and it's not just like, hey. It's not an expectation. Sure. That's I the problem. You. I hear you. And, yeah, uh, there's a way to do it. With, with I feel like over anything. gratitude <clears throat> is a clever way to present an expectation now. That's the real issue. That's. I figured it out. I figured out what I like, don't like about it. Like, like being overly like, like, oh, thank you, gratitude. oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you. What you're really doing is you're training the behavior before it's actually occurred. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, there's definitely, I mean, you kind of, I think that in anything, you know, like coming from sales or whatever, you know, manipulation is in anything and, and it's, and there's, there's good and bad to that. Like you can't, you know, right. we're all manipulated in some way and, and everything that we do is a manipulation of some, uh, even being nice is a manipulation, right? Um, That's exactly what I mean, right? You know, but I think that, um, there's no problem in doing that if what's coming across is like worthy of that, right? Because that's, that's, the nuance, the, the N word, right? That's the nuance of it. Like is what you're talking about is what you're doing is what you're presenting Mm -hmm. worth the person's attention that you're saying, give, you know, give to me. Right. This kind of goes in, this is kind of just like human psychology and, and, and game is like provide the value, you know, don't be nice in a manipulation to like get what you want without doing the thing. I think that's where you're coming from. Is yes. like I would rather give the thing that right. is valuable and then And then I will and get then as and what then comes along with I it. I should if it is get, what I think it is. If it is what I it, it, I expect it to be right. from myself, then I should get that response and I don't Naturally. I'm not opposed to reminding people to do that. For sure. But I am with you that you should be what you say you are, and then... I just prefer to be a little bit more stoic, I guess, about it. Especially, especially in the beginning, right? Because, like, at the end, when it's all said and done, and there's already these things, it's super easy to, like, be super reminding, because why? Look at all of what's been built. Yeah. But in the beginning, 
It's, I think it's even more so important to be stoic because what do we have to show for it? Yeah. Does that kind of make sense? I no, guess? I'm with you. I think that's why it's important just to, to, to keep it pushing, keep the needle moving, and then, you know, kind of know down what the road. What is ahead? Yeah, like, well, you hey, have man. to be both, right? This is something that we've talked about before is the nuance, the N-word of like everything is both. And so it has to be the stoicism of today, but also the projection of mm-hmm. knowing what's ahead and what's to come tomorrow. Um, and obviously, we want people to be a part of that, and that's important to us. So that's why it's important that we want to remind people and things like that, right? But at the end of the day, um, like it reminds me of when I was a manager in mortgages, and I would see these guys come in. Mm-hmm. And when I started in mortgage, I was very tempted to tell everybody about how good I was going to be because that was natural, like kind of for me, especially like growing up wrestling and like being very good at wrestling. But I had to like, and I had managers that would also like kind of like preach this stuff, right? And I listened to them. I don't know why I listened to them because normally I don't listen to authority figures, right? Sure. But it was like a kind of like a you haven't even been there yet type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I re- kind of remembered like when I grew up wrestling, like I didn't mm. act like I was the best at first. Like I was actually kind of scared to be there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until like I had a coach who told me, hey, you're good. You're going to be varsity your first year doing it. Like, that I didn't realize, like, I was actually pretty decent at this thing. Yeah, you right. You know what I mean? Right. Even being undefeated for off and JV, still didn't real like, still didn't really feel like I was good at it, you know? And, like, um, I kind of took some of that into, I think, the beginning of my mortgage career. And when I was a manager, I saw these dudes do the opposite. And every single one of them failed. Every single one of because them. Because they lacked... Uh, confidence the, or they they, they, they uh, didn't, they well didn't... they were overly confident on the outside which tells me that they lacked the confidence on the inside to w- actually put up with what the I get hard from, shit that's yeah. going to come once that shit does come i think there's a because i experienced this with jujitsu there's a genuine confidence that arises when you put yourself something through something um as you know as difficult and as character building as rest, as grappling right. just really in any way right and um what's interesting is that what's the word for this the universality of uh, uh, the I like the, it. it it's universal right uh-huh. it's it's the lessons that you learn in that are so easily transposable to different crafts you know, and so, I mean, even sales is a bit of a, it's a bit of a grapple with, you know, it's an intellectual totally. grapple with, you're both standing up. Well, yeah, okay, it's what's, a mental what's, wrestling match, especially on the phone. For sure. Because you're not seeing each other too, for right? For sure. No, it's an intellectual wrestling match. So you, you can, you kind of already know, it, this is something that I experienced too, especially just with where I was mentally after doing it for a while. Um, You just kind of without like for me going into metals because I was working in metals for a while like without even really knowing you know I definitely had to get over the nerves and stuff of like you know oh shit like what oh they're gonna cuss me out and stuff but then once I started kind of getting used to I got the marbles out of my mouth you know kind of thing yeah that's the term then it was like oh now I'm able to see the direct relationship from how to grapple physically with somebody Mm -hmm. into how to make somebody, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, it's mental jujitsu is what interested in, interested in giving you, you know, their money. Yeah, 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 exactly. Interested in giving you their money, whether it be whatever it is you're trying to sell them. Luckily, luckily for me in metals, um, I mean, a, there was no cold calls. So we were like, just people that we were calling were already oh. requesting. Yeah, and I know you guys bread are, and butter. Well, yeah, 
I mean, we're is, people already coming no, in. Cold calls were my bread and butter. Dude, gold sells itself. It's not like you already know that gold yeah. is. I don't need to tell you. Right. It's. I'm not selling window cleaner. Right. That's like, oh, this is better than Windex and blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. It's like, hey, I got gold. Do you want it? Like, yeah. how much? You actually <laughs> have something <laughs> tangible. You, you actually you know? had something tangible. But you tangible still have to. You, you still have to develop that connection and and make that person trust you. They don't know it's who the trust. Fuck you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's trust. So. What's that, like, my, my favorite one, like, that old people would say is, like, I don't know you from Adam. And I remember I don't, my first never time. never heard that in my life. You never heard that? <laughs> never heard that. That's, like, a big thing in, like, the, uh, like, the, uh, like, east side of the United States, right? Like, east coast. Is like east uh, coast thing? Is yeah. That like, uh, old people on the east coast are, like, uh, yeah, it's pretty east coast shit. So like they'll be like like in like Virginia for instance Maryland the stuff most like that. east I've ever been is Kentucky so okay I know nothing so they're like uh, they'll be like I don't know you from Adam and what that means is like I don't know who the heck you are but I remember my first time hearing that I was like what the hell are you who's Adam <laughs> I remember asking her like several times I'm like Miss I don't know like don't who, know is who is Adam. Adam is. She's like, it's Adam. Is that the other banker that you're, like, talking to? Like, who is Adam? I'm Josh. You say this over the phone. <laughs> right. No, I literally told her that. Because, like, that was, like, something that I was very good at is um, just because, like, I looked at it. You're, like, like looking in your record, like, did Adam, like, Adam's in office. Like, yeah. Did Adam talk to this lady already? Like, <laughs> uh, is Adam her brother? I'm, like, looking in the notes, right? And, like. She's like, no, it's like a saying. Like, I don't know who the heck you are. Uh, and, like, funny. she was, like, a nice old lady, you know, and. I ended up getting closing that That's one, funny. but you know, I always looked at it like um, I I remember when I would be deep in like you know like forty minutes into like a second call sale, like I would like close my eyes at my desk and put my hands on my ears like around the headset because there's all the noise of like the other sales and shit. So I'm trying yeah. to like zone in, right? And I would like picture us in like a conference room, like it, honestly, it wasn't okay. I'm going to be honest. In my mind, it was not a conference room. It was an FBI interrogation room. Right? Like Spotlight, black room, two fucking blank chairs and a blank table. Oh, my God. And I'm trying to get them to do the Someone's loan, behind dude. the see-through mirror. And that's how I used to picture it, honestly, in my brain. If I'm being honest, that was the room. And, like, I would put us there. And the conversation would go down. And I would try to, like, try to... My biggest problem in sales was always I got too emotional because I'd be like, you motherfucker, you wasted like fucking four days of yeah. my time, you yeah. fucking asshole. Yep. And yep. I counted your loan and your loan isn't a loan. <laughs> <laughs> my problem is I'd always get into conversations. I would like get into conspiracy conversations. With, oh, I was with, very with good at cutting that. Because, because it's, I mean... Yeah, I, mean, I, I like think about it. it. I mean, I you're, like it. You're, you, I mean, my my <laughs> industry is literally everybody that's like getting away from like like traditional banking. And I mean, they're like, oh, I'm they with want... you, dude. I'm I'm the mortgage guy. There it's is like, no more traditional banking oh, it's than like the mortgage opposite guy. Opposite ends of the yeah. But I, it's funny how it's funny how that connects because it's you know it's two entirely different industries but you still have the same like mentality of how to like so i'm saying it's universal you have two things that are utterly opposed put your money in get a mortgage and get real estate or uh-huh. put it in gold and right. completely take your money out of the well if you're if you have kids i don't like you kind of oh man i couldn't imagine having like three kids that are like, you know, like six, eight, and ten. Mm-hmm. And like the struggles it would take to like do that not living in a house. Right? Yeah. Regardless of like owning the house. I feel you. Let's say you don't own the house regardless, right? You got to have that space. Like not having that space I yeah. can imagine is like very, very, very difficult. Even like townhome, right? Like you got to have like a certain amount of square footage if you have a certain amount of people living under the roof, I feel when like. When I was living in the town it's townhome, very difficult otherwise. I was living with my, my, my roommate, Mike, in the town home. It was just him, me, and, and Luna. And I'm think you know, if I were to think, man, if I had, you know, three kids in there, how the, 
that'd be crazy. I guess they uh, do it out of love, literally, dude. You, like, well, you yeah. do it out of you have to I necessity mean, what, like, and love. You, yeah, right? what are you, you going to do? You know, like that's the shelter's the the last thing that that people will stop paying for. You got to have a you living gotta space. You got to have it. So yeah, it's 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 love, but it's it's also oblig. I mean, it's obligation. You you bringing kids in the world, you're obligated to to protect them and and, and to care have, for and, them, right? And to and to shelter them, you know. So that's a uh, yeah. But I I feel you on that. That's it's just so crazy because like everything is so expensive now. It's just getting to be like so, like it's literally like. <laughs> I remember being in high school in 2008 and, you know, like it was kind of crazy looking back, like not really realizing like because honestly, the place that we grew up is pretty sheltered from like how crazy it could have been. Oh, yeah. Big time. But also in its own way is pretty crazy because like, you know, people like it, it got crazy. Like people lost their parents because of this, not just like in divorce, but like in life and like things like that. You know what I mean? Like 2008 got crazy. And so it's just, um, when I look at today, I'm like, I think I didn't feel like it's going to get worse than 08, but I feel like it's going to get not as bad as 20 or or 1929. Right. Unfortunately, I think that we're actually looking at probably something worse, right? Like depression level stuff and just, Based on what smarter people yeah. than I, smarter people than I, have have, have talked about yeah. in terms of the in the patterns, I'm a big believer in patterns, um, and and cycles, um, whether they're manipulated and generated or they just exist, you know, naturally, you kind of have this thing going on. So I think it gets weirder before it gets. Better. Oh, I think it gets really bad. I think it gets better, but it definitely gets it definitely gets weirder. That's why I say I think First. it gets worse than 2008, but not as bad as 1929. Like I don't think it's going to get to great depression status. I don't think we're literally going to be boiling these shoes to eat dinner. No. But like be- because of I think because of where we're at from a technology standpoint. Yeah. I think it gets I don't think it gets as bad um from it's like a trade-off I don't think it gets bad from a like a physical poverty level, um, but right. I think it gets bad from the possibility of getting out of poverty when you look at what's going on at a pattern uh. level. So what you had with the Great Depression was post Great Depression, right? You have a, you have a, you have a Depression, it's all this stuff is engineered by the people that that, that run the rent. So you have depression, then what comes Allegedly. Th- allegedly. <laughs> what comes after the Great Depression? 1933, the government goes, We're bankrupt. We need everybody's gold. We need everybody's money. Because gold is money then. Mm-hmm. We need everybody's money, your gold. Give it to us. And what do they do? They extend they now sign, they create credit. 1933. So you have a depression that generates the necessity and the response of now this first stage of digital money, Mm -hmm. credit. Mm -hmm. You now have another depression being engineered, Mm -hmm. and this time it is engineered. Oh, this allegedly. uh, Allegedly. For what? Let's be. Let's be. To install the next level of. (laughs) It'd Let's be, not be conspiracy theorists. How, no, no way we would. Allegedly. No way there's rich and powerful people <laughs> in the financial industry that are planning for their benefit and not ours. There couldn't possibly be Or to maintain that. the wealth. Or to maintain their position in the hierarchy. <laughs> right. No way that would ever happen. <laughs> but you have now. You who have, lobbies? You have. I don't know anyone who lobbies. No, it doesn't exist. It's a myth. It's a, <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Um. The fact that conspiracy and myth is a synonym in most people's minds and they don't know the definition. Is that true? Do you know what the definition of conspiracy is? No. 
okay, this is where everyone gets fucked up, is if you and I are sitting here and I go, you know what, Josh, I'm really hungry. We should go to Chipotle. And you go, you know what, Brandon? I am also hungry. I would like to go to Chipotle. We've now just conspired to go to Chipotle. Oh. Cons- conspire <laughs> is literally con is the is the prefix of get together, uh-huh, come together. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Conspire, get together, make a plan. So we're saying so to say a conspiracy theory is like a so theory so that a conspiracy is together. Conspiracy is planning together. You can you can literally swap that in. Right. Planning together. You're telling me. That's an interesting breakdown you're, of the You're fanatics. telling me. That's what I do. I'm a language guy. That's yeah. what I do. You're telling me that in every known hierarchy on planet Earth, within every species, there exists hierarchies, and the ones at the top, the bully at school, the lion of the pride, the fucking giraffe, the fucking lobster. The lobster. All the all the creatures, humans to lobsters to fucking ants to bee to whatever, the ones at the top will do anything, anything to maintain their position at the top. Humans, as much as we like to give ourselves all this credit, like we're so much different, we're not that different. We think we are because we have language, thumbs, and we can make buildings and cars. But Mm -hmm. at a deep level that goes, how many creatures on earth have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth? A lot. We are not that different. (laughs) You're telling me that human beings at the top of the financial structure, which at this point in the United States, since 1913, is a private institution. It's not even. It's not even the U. It's not even our government's money. Mm-hmm. You're telling me the people that own this private institution, that are connected into this network, aren't doing something. Every day to continue their dominance no. in the hierarchy. No, dude. There's no way. <laughs> no. To reel you back in, are we very different though? Like we're more than just like eyes, nose, and a mouth, right? I mean, from uh, from a from a decision making process. The things that happen, you know, because of uh, people will say that our, our prefrontal cortex gives us the ability to rationalize and, and, uh-huh. and deduce. And, and now we are very intelligent. No, well, some of us, <laughs> some of us are very intelligent. <laughs> well, like, um, but just being able to reason is pretty like, but it's not, I guess reason isn't special to just us, is it? Is yeah, it? but... Like well, dolphins can reason, right? I would say that dolphins and orcas are probably smarter than us just because they don't have thumbs and can't build I stuff. Know they're smarter I, than us. You ever see the clip of, of Rogan um, saying he was like on a boat on mushrooms and he was like, a dolphin like popped up and he like was like looking at it and he was like looking at him right in the eyes. <laughs> like it was like, to- he's like, dude, the thing was totally conscious. Like I was like, I was looking at like how I would look at another human. Yeah. I think that we are magnificent creatures. I think that humans are capable of godly things. Um, But I don't think that separates us as much as people want to say. And it's literally because of a conversation like this. It's like, hey, all you have to do is fix the language that fixes your perspective. And then you can see like what's what's going on like there are hierarchies everywhere even within our species and a power attracts power and b the ones who have that power 
get used to a lifestyle. This is this is yeah. why it happens at every level. People get used to a lifestyle that power provides, and then they will plan with others at that level to make sure that they maintain what they have. I can see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like on the, like the like basis of like dolphins are pretty smart intellectual beings. And, like, if they could, like, even speak to us, they would probably be, like, yo, you guys are kind of stupid. Like, you guys can't, like, distribute your resources effectively. Like, we do it pretty easily and yeah. you guys, like, kind of suck at it. But, like, maybe that's just, like, an overpopulation. They swim around. Like, they swim around. Maybe they we just s- need to be hunted again. Like, maybe we need saber-toothed tigers to be eating some of us. And, well, like, you know, you know something? some of that stuff. You, you know, know something? And, like, maybe if I that would were be hunted. The case. I'd probably get hunted, too. But like, if that were the case, maybe be better. <laughs> if that were the case, check out, check out how sobering that mm-hmm. thought is. Yeah, it is. Because everybody, this is what I'm saying. Everybody is drunk on this idea, right? That we are so much different, and that's only because we're at the top. Yeah, I think it's because it, they it's like, are because also told that they are from like a the, lot of. But like, look, and there's nothing that this, happens to them in their direct vicinity of experience. Well, this goes. To, that I, think we, I think we that, talked about this right. last time, or um, the 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 fact that suffering is essential to life, right? All things suffer. So when we have developed to such a level, to such an advanced level really all over the world. Um, there's still places catching up and obviously this, you know, but yeah, but like arguably, yeah, I, I know what you mean, but for the most part, things have gotten so good because of our advances mm-hmm. that there are really, at least let's, let's take, you know, first world in the way, the, the world that we inhabit, right? There, what, what problem do you have? There's no shortage of food. There's no shortage of water. I mean, look, look around you in 360 degrees. Yeah. And within a mile, there's somewhere to there's somewhere that has food. Right. There's somewhere that has water. And I promise you, if you really, really needed it, you know what? You would find it. And so, oh, on. go ahead, go ahead. So, this is why we had this point that. There's no real suffering in the world. So if we were hunted immediately, everybody would sober up to the fact that shit, now we've got real problems. Now we really have to like reset the perimeter. We really have to have like solid structure. We really have to like be strong. We really have to like actually survive. We're not worrying about all these fed. Everyone's arguing over fed ideologies and privileges and we're all privileged totally and some privilege people to be american privilege 100%. to be a human one 100%. in a, and this one goes, in 14 this goes quadrillion are the chances of this you being goes a deeper, human being th- let alone born in america this or goes an deep, american in your lifetime before somebody gets all Ooh, this goes deeper than like the the key phrase that's within like social justice right there are no real pro- like the right the, the the problems you think are problems are usually generated by the ones that profit and benefit from the division of the masses well and then even your own brain and like the perception of like what's happening right like um just like uh like your own brain like your your own pro- your problems are in your brain like the, you, they're either you, they're problems that you think are problems that really aren't in the grand scheme. Or they were problems, problems that were given to you. Or they're yeah, but there a lot of them are like in your head. What I was gonna say that's super interesting too is like you're talking about like suffering and like all that like how it's like kind of like it's I feel like it's like almost necessary, right? Like so like Absolutely in, the, necessary. in the Bible, right? Like in Genesis, there's like Adam and Eve, and like God tells Adam and Eve or Adam like. Your life now is going to be toiling. You're going to toil all the time and everything's going to be hard work for you, basically. Yeah. And if you look at, like, other animals and, like, a dolphin, for instance, to sustain itself doesn't have to work very hard. Like, it's just a fine fish and then it can, like, easily eat the fish. A lion has to work, eh, but, like, in the in the comparison, the amount of work it takes for a lion or a dolphin to eat 
is far less than it takes like a human man in primitive day and age to go find a catch and hunt it and eat it, right? Yeah. Way easier, right? I think and that so has to I do... think that necessity over time created farming, right? And then that gets it just like builds on top of each other. Cause like For really sure. we're just trying to like work as less as possible. And so this is all the result of what happens when like there's no more work kind of left. Yeah. And then isn't it kind of magnificent how we're tearing ourselves apart now? And like if man's like it, life is supposed to be toiling, maybe hell is like tearing each other apart when there's no more work to be done. It's a brilliant observation. I don't know. I, it, <laughs> it 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 that ha- like that energy has to go somewhere, right? Like the, right. the the and this is why this gets into gets into what we're doing. It gets into the issues that we see today. Is that um creative energy that like assertive that like that um I mean I just I call it like libido, right? Like the 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 energy that like needs to like kill uh hunt an animal to eat it to dig and to to plant food to to build a house it, to, i mean you're not just talking about laying a few bricks on top of one another and then you know it's like i mean building legitimate shelter is is work i mean that takes mm-hmm. that's that's a hard gig you know yes, to be is. in a place where we have the the front part of our brain has worked all the way to the point where i mean even most of the manual labor of producing the infrastructure of our world is it's automated so you don't have i mean this is this is why it's super important to like Go to the gym and and find a you know a phys- it doesn't have to be jujitsu but uh, uh, find a physical exercise like that shit has to move, and if it yeah. doesn't, look at what happened. Look at all the the crazy movements that are going on post industrial revolution, mainly recently. Yeah, because of a hundred years of the industrial revolution, biologically, like this is what so many people. In our generation, in our in the generations that are alive today, don't grasp is that you know what we are so pumped with this this like modern history and and U.S. propaganda and just propaganda that it kind of blocks off the actual it it you're pumped with national history and you're not pumped with history as a species. And there's like this weird mm-hmm. wall that I've observed in in like the in the collective mind where people just kind of like I mean everything pre World War II is like just this fog except for Egyptian history. But even that, and, but even that is like, and I guess they do like. A we'll middle, get back to that. They we'll do get, Middle Ages too. But, like that's like sixth and seventh grade, right? Yeah, uh, but I mean. Even a lot of that is, even a lot of that's like manipulated anyway. We'll get into Egypt if if you want because I've been reading Graham Hancock's book and and that guy that guy's got a lot of really like fascinating stuff to say. But I want to finish this. Um, so, anyways, the the perspective of us as a species rather than us as a country or as a or as a part of the world or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean. The Industrial Revolution happens about 100 years ago. There's an absolutely 0% chance. It's an impossibility that biologically, physiologically, psychologically, we're able that quickly to evolve to a world that is now nearly entirely digitized, entirely automated, and we don't know how to react because we're not swimming around hunting fish like dolphin. We're not 
lions in the, in the pride running in the plains. We're not hunter-gatherers with spears and shit anymore like we were for a long time. We're not doing what we've been doing for a long time. There's no way that we can adapt that quickly. And the the solution to, to all of it is, yo, slow the fuck down. Like we get so because that's the pace of automation. When you when the progress is now in the hands of automated um, processes, it's not. I mean, there's very few people that are working like with their their hands and craft. I mean, it's like even like even craft items, you know knives and stuff like that most people aren't crafting that with their hands it's there's a whole machinery, factory that's right. doing yeah, it yeah, yeah. and so we're living in this world that's like whoa it, it, we're expected within ourselves to we have this energy to to do to work you don't have really the position to do it you don't have the world to do it in anymore there's so many people, right, that it, it, it's like it'd be fine if there was no automation, but you have more and more people and you have more and more automation. That means there's less and less things that we need all of those hands for, you know. Yeah, it's a math problem, dude. And as being a mortgage person, I used to joke and there's a guy at the gym I joke at around with mm -hmm. and say... I'm a numbers guy <laughs> and the numbers just don't really, the numbers just really don't work out, dude. But then you also hear about like that there's less people than they need. And then that's a problem too. Underpopulation. Uh, and it, then it, in terms of what, like in terms of like our generations, like not getting married and not having children and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, those are, di those are different issues. And, and that's like, um, you know, and totally that's definitely its own. That's definitely its own thing. That it doesn't. It doesn't have as much to do with. And you know, those are valid concerns and and valid talking points. Um. But it doesn't have as much to do with like the actual individual awareness that, like, hey. I live in a world I'm not biologically equipped for. That's okay. Yeah. How do I how do I now deal with that information? How yeah. do I find what to do at the pace that I can do it? Like what is what is something that I can still be how can I still be like of service to uh -huh. to, to to my community? You know, myself the, and my future children, and, and I think, use, is the real question. And use the it's like the community's third, dude. Honestly, it's for like sure. yourself and then your future children absolutely. are absolutely first in your mind before your community. And I think maybe that's where like conservatives and like real hardcore like liberals might differ. Like they might think like, no, your community's first and then yourself mm -hmm. and then your or maybe your kids and then sure. you or something like that. Right. Yeah, um, I think like kinda, they just have it. I think it kind of goes without without saying. I mean, the uh, that's obviously yeah. Their values the are just priority. Little, are they're prioritized a little differently, right? For sure. But what I was gonna say is, um, for me, with the original priorities, um, have you looked into those like DIY homestead, like self sustaining? I have three log self cabins and stuff like I have, that. I have three self sufficiency books. And I follow quite a number of people that that operate homesteads. Yeah, that like show how just just in case. What I'm getting into right now is a lot of like the uh, the like self prep. Like let's say like Huntington Beach gets flooded for like a month. Like I'm gonna be able to eat like rice and beans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you're a prepper, dude. I'm starting to become. You're a prepper, a prepper dude. I'm wow. Starting to become a prepper. <laughs> I'm not one yet. I would like to be one. Yeah. But um, I'm just realizing that things are getting hot. You know, hot. I, I, I thought about this. <laughs> I thought about this when I was uh, – when, we when we went to Argentina, 
a uh, couple years ago, I realized this, and I was uh, just being there. You know, like I took. I probably only went down there with like four hundred bucks, right? And lived like a king for yeah. for two for for two weeks. You know, I mean, right? Four hundred bucks is like a m- lot of money. Like my food for for. Oh, here it's here. like fucking yeah, it's your food for like two weeks. It's just you know, so yeah, and, and we got to do some weeks. cool stuff, right? So, um, but I just realized I was like, dang, dude, you can get it twice. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think the rate, I think the currency conversion rate at the time was like 62 to 1. And I'm just down there like, like, what? It made me go like, what am I doing with my money in America? Like, because this shit's got legs here. And in a, like, you know what I mean? And uh, of course, I'm I'm still not the uh, as frugal as I should be. Of course, um, because I I'm just you know hey you could go tomorrow man, enjoy your life. But at the same time, it really put in perspective. That was like damn dude, I could literally like, I mean I could work for three years and like probably buy a pretty decent lot of of land like down here and like put a whole get a whole thing together you just start it starts it starts getting the gears oh, going of you, like, like, of I, like uh, putting something together that's i've been thinking about like once i get that black belt someday like what am i gonna like i'm i'm out i think if, unless california literally turns it around which the red wave is supposedly coming and maybe something does happen in like california you know we'll start locking people in jail for punching each other in the face cold clocking each other on the <laughs> sidewalk uh and at least for like you know, seventy two hours you would hope, <laughs> but um, one can only hope, dude. And it doesn't feel like that is ever gonna change. Yeah, and it's only getting worse from here. Part part it's of me, the wild west now. Part part of me has been has felt called to stay here because I definitely. I mean, yeah, I want to be the change, right? I mean, dude, but literally also, when 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 um. When the whole Kufid thing happened, I mean, if not for my family and my and and my dog, I'd have been gone, dude. Me too. Because I was, I mean, Me too. after about a month of it, I was like, and I knew before, I I knew beforehand, um, that it wasn't gonna just be like two weeks. Me too. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm on to you, motherfuckers. I I know what's going on. Yeah, I'm um, surprised it only lasted two years, actually. Well, you know, because th- thankfully, and it's there's... also not the coup. You mean the lockdowns? I don't call. I don't ever say. Yeah, but that's because the, of the, COVID. I say because of the lockdowns. No, that's the name of the. That's the name of the of the procedure. No, no, no. It's not the name of the disease. Of, of yeah, the yeah, disease. yeah, yeah. But I, I refuse to like let that. Um, it's like I don't say public schools. I say government schools, because. That's what they are. Like they they use la- like your language guy, right? They reuse language yeah, to disguise what they're doing. I, I don't. So do, I, I like to say what they they're are actually doing. So, uh, the 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 the, the Kufid is the Kufid. It's the name of the lock. It's like it's the name of it, right? It's the name of the procedure because it's not. Because uh, this is when this is a fault. It's a false statement. And the whole thing is. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a false statement to say, oh. Rest in peace, Josh. He died of the Kufid. Because you didn't. You, if it was what they're saying, it was SARS coronavirus 2. It was not Kufid. Kufid 19. What if COVID is what Trump was actually talking about when he said, uh, what was it on the tweet? It was like, with all due respect, Kofefi, or what, 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 what was it? it was something like, Something, something, so, it was some weird, obscure, ominous sentence. I think that... I don't know if ominous is the right word, but obscure is certainly the right word. I, I think and that... And then, Kofefi, and what? <laughs> because, here's what happened. You had... No, I think that everything that that guy... People are... Okay, people are on Trump's nuts, and people are on Elon's nuts. Like, they're not literally working... With what was that same meme we posted the group. other day? That meme we both posted on our stories? I think I stole it from you, but it was like... Uh, I forgot. 
It was like uh, people we, we will post a lot. people will make fun of you for like worshiping Jesus, and then yeah, they you worship, know, politi- you worship, and yeah, worship yeah, yeah. politicians. People are literally worshiping Trump, like he's the savior. And I'm like, dude, this guy is literally he's part of the f- he's part of the group. It's literally what? What do you mean? Look at all the. I like the, to say actors. Look at all the pictures with with, with, with Epstein and, and all those guys. It's like, wh- wh- uh, how do you let it like? I like to say actors in a play, but 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 this is the you know it's uh, everyone's got their yeah it's all good They're, it's like a soap opera. Don't right? get me started on Elon. No, dude. it's a, don't it, even get me started. I already on. know what politics is. Politics is an interactive soap opera that we all get to be a part of, and it's, it's what it is. You, yeah, it's, it's an, theater. It, so everything. So because you have soap opera. you have like um, you have basically um, with COVID. Well, even with if you, let's say like comes, you don't even believe in conspiracies, real quick, right? Let's say like you reject the idea that there's a cabal, a deep state, any any of this stuff, right? Like you're just like a smart person. No, no, no. They're the smart person. No, we're the normies, right? That's what I'm so, saying. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You reject. Oh yeah, yeah. you I, reject I you. conspiracies because you. you're <laughs> smart. Because you're smart, right? You're smarter than me. So mm. you reject it all. Even the way that politics works. Is like popularity contests when you were voting for like school president, right? Sure. So it's just pandering in the sheer essence of like, that's all it is. Like we, you have to know that's what it is because that's what it is. At best. So that means it's theater. At best. So you have to agree that it is theater regardless of what your position is politically. Best case scenario. Yeah. You're actually voting and there's people legitimately counting all the votes and who Accurately. gets the right, votes, yeah. who gets the most. Everything's legit. Actually Let's just say gets put legit. into place. Yeah, everything's super legit. It's still theater. I, it has I to couldn't be. agree more. It has to be. It, because the, it's, you, they have constituents that they want to make happy. And the loudest ones are the ones that they'll try to make the most happy for the trickle-down effect. Or they will tell those constituents one thing, but then keep their promises to their lobbying buddies in the MIC. No, there's or, different... There's, I think every, everyone's got a role to play, or too. Or the like, firm. Right? Like, so, like, if you're a basket... If you own the Los Angeles Lakers, I'm noticing this, right? Like... Because I'm a big Lakers fan. I've grown up a huge Lakers fan, right? So, like, if you own the Los Angeles Lakers and you're the new – let's say you're the new coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. You just okay. fired their coach, right? You have to come in as the coach and you have to say – you have to make the players who you're going to coach love you immediately as much as you can, right? Sure. Yeah. That's your job. Sure. So you're like, I think Russell Westbrook is an amazing player – He's going to do it a great job with this team. And everyone knows Russell Westbrook's the problem. Yeah. But he's the coach. That's his role. Right. And, and the thing is, is if you're doing your – if the best people really believe what they – right? So, like, you want to hire a coach that really believes that Russell Westbrook right. – Russell blah, blah, Westbrook blah, blah, blah. is a great <laughs> player. Got him. They, they – <laughs> Do you, they, you want to hire a coach that really kind of believes that for some degree. For sure. At the same time, you have a team manager or like a GM, general manager, who recognizes we got to offload this fucking guy for as much as we can get. Right. And so I don't think the coach and the GM are necessarily buddies. Right? Right. But they are working together to create this image and bullshit because like we've said on previous podcasts they're just doing their jobs absolutely and so like uh that's where like i guess like i was kind of saying on previous stuff too is like i don't believe anymore in like a grand like puppet wizard who's like i think it's just a bunch of bees in a hive working together to maintain For their the order. record, yeah. I do believe in shadowy wizards. <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> but that's a, that exists like on another level. Okay. And I don't think that it's entirely shadowy wizards. But I think that... How many shadowy wizards are there? There's probably... <laughs> probably 69 shadowy wizards. <laughs> that control everything. 420 There's 420 wizards. wizards chanting in a cave right now <laughs> for your demise. <laughs> we'll kill the humans. <laughs> They're uh, they're also in their reptile form. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe there's a couple uh, snake people. Yeah, yeah. Sprinkled the, in the lizard people, right? The lizards, the the reptilian overlords. But um, anyway, um, what are you saying? I think that I do th- I do think that that exists because um, all you have to do is look at a dollar bill and ask questions. <laughs> what the hell is the fucking eyeball in the pyramid? What are the Latin terms on your fucking money? What is all this? <laughs> I think about like, uh, especially like in the 90s. It's not nothing. No, no, no. Like think about like, remember it's when you were. It's on the like, money. There's remember? a point to everything. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Remember before the internet when you were a kid in the 90s. Okay. Imagine asking your dad that question. He'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> because before like the internet and any of this like exchange of like free exchange of like information, He'd say, right? I'd say, dad, what is this pyramid on the dollar bill? And he goes, <laughs> I don't know, but it feeds you. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's exactly what they would say in the 90s. That's literally exactly what your dad would have sold you in the 90s. And it's so funny. Fair. Because we're the last. It's fair. We're literally the it's last fair. generation. It's fair. That grew up before this. We're like the last generation of the Stone Age. And, like, our parents' parents would say that about, like, the television stuff, right? Like, right. But, like, it's just, like, uh, before the internet, right? we're the last generation, bro. And so, like, I think about, like, all of the things that, like, you and I kind of, like, I do it because it's fun. And I also do believe it. Like, let's just be honest. I, I also do believe it. But um, before all of that, like, like... That just used to be, like, one guy who was, like, kind of a nut job at the local bar. You know what I mean? Talking about... Talking about the shit and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Now it's almost everyone. Yeah, it's... it's, Yeah, for sure. It's partly the internet because this stuff gets around and, and people are creative and, man... You know, I, I laugh all the times. I, I laugh all of the times. All the times. All of the times. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh all of the time, time being singular. T H Y A. Time. M- like the. E. <laughs> I sprinkle time on my steaks. <laughs> um, <laughs> sound bite. Um, all the time I laugh at memes. That uh, speak of how memes will save the human race. Right, right, right. And the great meme you know war, if you will. Th- you and I are oh, essential sh- soldiers. We're on the front lines. <laughs> In the great meme war. We're on war. the front lines. <laughs> yeah. We're on the, the yeah. heavy artillery. And I'm not going to die like Uriah, that, that fucking pansy dude. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, Bathsheba's husband. David, King David, wanted the chick that was bathing on the oh, roof. Yeah, 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 yeah. Senate, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I'm not going to die like that, I didn't, I didn't know his name, but I know ah. the story. I know the story. I know the story. I wanted to be a pastor. Yeah, dude was, uh, <laughs> dude got got. He did get, he, he did he, done he, get got. He, he fucked around hey, and he that'll found show out. Hey, <laughs> that'll show you what allegiance to politicians will get you, huh? <laughs> uh, you said it. You said it. Get you cuckolded. And dead. D- both. <laughs> and who knows which one comes first. Good point. <laughs> Brutal. F. F's in F. chat, boys. F's in chat. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, baby. But um, yeah, the Great Meme War. The, we are essential soldiers. Well, in the Great Meme War. it's amazing what um, a picture, <laughs> some words, and just a general context of what's happening in the picture, and a general context of what the words mean. <laughs> And you kind of just rub those all together. You slap that bitch on your screen. It's amazing what that can yeah, communicate. Yeah, it's like that old saying. Like, a picture's worth a thousand words. But who imagine, would have guessed if you could put words on top of the imagine picture? Imagine a picture with words. <laughs> How many words that's worth. Holy fuck. <laughs> it's you at least I mean? a thousand plus the words on the page, right? It's like a thousand. It's at least a thousand plus that. It's got to be at least... 69 million words. That's the real question. Is it multiplied by the words or is it an addition? There's definitely some multiplication going on. I I think it's multiplication as well. A meme is worth... Because if it wasn't multiplications, how could memes become memes copyright? within memes? Can we copyright this statement that... A like, for word... instance, you want to see how it's multiplication? How many times have you seen the, like, guy... Turning and like looking at the girl, and then his girlfriend like looking at him. Sixty nine times. And then like, how many times has that like? Oh yeah, it's just it, it's, it's its just... own ecosystem at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, literally. And so that's why the great meme war is really that's the great. I mean. it's, it's the greatest thing that we can what, be doing. Like, that communicates sp- a, a ton already. Right. That communicates a thousand words. You don't even got to meme it. You just look at the picture. It's well, like, man, like that says that says a lot. Now, you contextualize it a little bit, and now it means even more. Have you seen this? Somebody fact check me on this too. Certainly fact check me right now, actually, Alan. But the Zoomers, I don't know how you would fact check me on this, but the <laughs> Zoomer generation is supposedly far more conservative than us millennials. Supposedly. Which is like, you know, like the 23-year-olds right now? I'm going to have to wait for the fact check. I don't I don't know. I don't know how you would fact check. I don't know. But like um I can That's what I've heard for... is that they're far more conservative than us and like they actually believe in religion and stuff like that to a larger percentage than like we do and stuff because if I were to base that off of my siblings and their friends I'm I actually might agree with that but this is not necessarily this is like, religion but it's oh, certainly in temperament my sister is I think fits that mold as well and it's like um and just I think they look at our I, age group I, and they're like they're kind of depressed I, in their I, 30s I, I, I don't want to be depressed in my I 30s I think that dude. like I think that like um there's there's <laughs> values from religion uh-huh that like overlap yeah, yeah without yeah. the actual like Hey, this person is like religious. They go to church because yeah, I consider. Yeah, yeah. I consider. I was going to ask you: Do you think? It, like, do you consider yourself a Christian, or do you consider yourself agnostic, or like, what do you consider yourself? Well, I don't consider myself agnostic because I know that there's a um, higher power. A there is a uh, a creative source of of yeah, the energy. In I mean, I, I mean, I, I call it God. I mean, it's the it's a it's, it's you know I I do yeah believe like that Native Americans. I wouldn't call them atheists or agnostics. They believe no. They were highly they were highly yeah. spiritual. Right. Um. And I think that even the term spiritual gets this weird muddy well, thing. Well, it's this woo woo thing now that's also witchcraft. So but, you can't say that anymore. But it's, I mean, but what's witchcraft? I mean, cool. in terms of, um, in terms of. <laughs> Um, you know, believing that there is a, I mean, I would probably call, cause the, the, when you start that path, God is like sky daddy. And it's like, this, yeah, yeah, it's like this, yeah. it's this I guy, like, it's this man. Yeah, we're, there's a lot and, of elementary and, and this Christians. This is where, this, this is point. where the, this is where the human ignorance comes into play. I fucked this up. When it, it's just the one blade on the bottom. No, I like pulled it up. Is it chilling? We're chilling? All right. Um, it, this is where like 
there's a um oh what's it? It's like the bell curve. Mm-hmm. Is it a bell curve of like, it's like um at the beginning it's like the caveman like face and it's like I be- oh yeah it's yeah, like yeah. I believe in God yeah and then it's like it bells up to everyone's like there's no God da, 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 da. and then it's like back to this dude in like a Jedi wizard robe he's like I believe in God and it's I like, have that it's one like that. queued up ready to post on my story soon actually. it's 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 yeah that I kind of feel like that's the journey that is the journey is like is going that's well, what the story of the prodigal all, of the son is that's the journey. Hmm. I'd like to hear what my buddy, what uh, Alex Chan has to say that because he's, he's the got infamous the, Alex Chan. I think this is the third time we got to get it mentioned. We're gonna get you on here, bro. We're gonna get you on here. The infamous Alex Chan. Um, dude. The dude's just, he's just he's a wizard, Harry. He's like, oh, wizard, Harry. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but he was. I say that because he was explaining that whole story to me um, a while ago, like. I mean, really breaking it down, but, um, 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 yeah, I think that you go from, oh yeah, like there's the, the ignorant version of like, oh, we're made in, I like to say the we're made in God's, it's the elementary kind of Christian that's just like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah well, it's, it's like not going to question anything, it's, just like super, for sure, into, like, but I say, it's just drunk on the same. it is, it's the same thing, and that's it's, cool, it's the same, it's like, the same I, thing, you need to it, get drunk on grace it, and ignorant, salvation, it's ignorant, important to get drunk on grace and salvation, ignorant to me is not as, um, uh, like, as not, like not a, detrimental. Uh, yeah, 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 like a it, derogatory word. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, it's just like literally lack of knowledge, knowledge and perspective. Yeah. Like, it's not like a, it's not like a, it's an experience thing to you. It's not like a, de- like a, like a derogatory it's thing. It's not like you're yeah. dumb. It's, you right. just haven't applied the right perspective to something. And that's probably because of a lack of, of experience or curiosity into well, how do I think about this more deeply? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not bad; it's just not full. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of go through, you know, everything kind of breaks down, and then and then I think when you emerge out the other side, you use mushrooms or s- some spiritual tool or or. Or you just go off to a monk temple and all you do is breathe for, you know, six months. Um, <laughs> you know, like, and then you achieve, you achieve this thing that you're like, whoa, there's, uh, there's something that we're all connected to. Mm-hmm. And then there's patterns that seem to come out of nothing. And I would say that, you know, like, um, like the Fibonacci spiral, right? Like to me, that's kind of like the thumbprint of of God, this creative force, this pattern that emerges everywhere. Mathematics is the language of that, right? Like we didn't we didn't make we didn't we like discovered it for ourselves. We didn't create math, right? It was just a lot of yeah, math existed very before curious, we found it. A lot right. of very curious people, pre iPads. We're, they didn't have Netflix to watch. They didn't have anything to watch or do. Or they just all they had was at nighttime. They looked up at the stars and they go, "You know what? I swear to God, that fucking star was there last year." Yeah, yeah. It's like and discovery isn't discovery. It's just naming things that like people have. It's just yeah, yeah. Naming, it's naming, claiming, things. and 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 I mean, it's discovery not in the creation sense but it's discovery in like the sense of like awareness like yeah oh shit well like, I, that's why i was gonna say i was like, i'm gonna go backwards and also say like, it's it's just naming things you're right right you know right, right, I mean? right, like, right it's more than just but that's well, like, what it is like it's who n- like who's the first person to say hey the moon is full every 28 days and someone goes, no, it's not. I, and he goes, I swear to God, motherfucker, start a, start a timer. Uh-huh. Start a, put a sundial out. You know, let's, let's capture some shadows here. Or even here. crazier, like he has notes. 
Because he wrote, right, he wrote you know, down. Graham right. Hancock, dude, I'm telling you, Graham Hancock, the whole first like 10 chapters is about um, uh, map making and calendar making, like in the ancient world. And how, um, I mean, people from prehistoric, like the people that are at the beginning of history, right? Because keep in mind, that's not the beginning of the human race. Mm -hmm. That's just the beginning of the story of humanity, his story, the story of humanity as we know it. Out of nowhere, these massive civilizations that they, they just pop out of nowhere. There wasn't some build up to that. You know, and then went to find and discover maps that were discovered, rediscovered is what I should say, in like the 1500s of maps from antiquity when compared to more recent times, the, the geological structure of the planet was different. Water, like water levels were different. And you can see it. Um, this you got to read this. You got to you got to read it, and then we'll we'll come back on on the on the Hancock I'm not thing because read it. oh man, you have to, bro. <laughs> it's so good. I know myself. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> Do the audiobook. The audiobook's good. He, read, he, he like, reads it to you. Um, honestly, but anyway, Grant it's, Hancock's it's, work just doesn't interest me that much, and we can get into why, but. To wrap it up, <laughs> all I'm saying is that there is a, there are very, I'm going to use the word curious first, because I think that right. curious is, curiosity is probably the most synonymous word to intelligence that there is. Interesting. Um, because think about it, I mean... Well, like curiosity leads you to seek if knowledge. I'm, I mean, you're going to figure something. <laughs> I, I mean, if you're, if you're, you're going to become, I don't really agree that smart and intelligent, they're loosely, they're loosely the same thing. Yeah. Like, I think that intelligence kind of. Well, I don't think people smart, should, I don't think people should strive to be smart. I think people should strive to be wise. Well, I would agree that that has more value than than all than than any of it. I would say that intelligence is a byproduct of of wisdom, wisdom because right. intelligence has to do with like connecting dots. Right. Whereas smart is more of like I can perform a function very well. You know, like mm -hmm. the conversation of the spider. A spider can weave beautiful yeah, webs. Like a dog and, is smart and connect a and a, a dog can go. A dog fetch, is smart. Fetch right, a ball, it can come back and do commands. When you want it to do them, right? Right. A dog is smart. You know, and and and, and that it like bleeds into intelligence, but then it doesn't keep up because then at some level, intelligence has to do with like right. curiosity is like a carrot on a stick. Well, curiosity is what le it, curiosity is what develops it, right? Because if I if I want to create a system. Well, I can't just – it's not just going to make itself. The system is born of, okay, I like doing this. Okay, how do I do it better? What is this – what's this aspect of the thing I like to do? Uh, pretty pretty much, yeah. But Carrot on a stick. And that's what leads – the progress <laughs> – yeah, it's what leads you into it. But the progress is the intelligence that you gain from following that carrot. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Which isn't the same as being which isn't the same as being smart. No, um, it's certainly not. It's um it's actually it takes much more courage. So that's why I, I prefer curiosity, is not only does curiosity like develop knowledge, but also kinda like develops courage because you have to like go through it, like you were kinda, I guess, mm -hmm. alluding to a little bit mm -hmm. there too. Yeah, imagine being alive let's say post ice age. 9,000 years ago. Dude. No internet. No uh, no TV. No radio. Freezing to death. No no nothing. Oh, you're in a warm climate. You're, you're, you're in yeah. Egypt. You're in Egypt. You're okay, in a warm okay, climate. Okay, okay, okay. And all you have is the fucking 
stars in the sky. And you just notice, whoa. <laughs> These things are in the same pattern the whole time. Yeah, that's like got to be keep, crazy. They keep rotating. I can't even, that's pretty nuts, dude. It's pretty nuts. I always kind of wonder, like, what type of primitive human I would have been. What's the answer? I don't know. You can't know. You, yeah, I don't think you, you can really know. can't know. So, but that's something I do think about. Like, it's like, uh, like I'm grateful. And the reason why I think about it is because I'm grateful to have grown up in this time where I had access to these things and my curiosity led me here. But if I grew up as a primitive human, I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have made it past fucking four and I would have actually drowned. Yeah. And that would have been the end of the job. There's no way to tell. There's, there's no, no way, way to know. There's there's absolutely no way to tell. I think that who you are characteristically would have been relatively the same. Um, Maybe we chose to be here now. You know, there's a good argument for that. There's a good argument for that. And you hear it all the time in the spiritual community. Um. And I guess what leads me to what would make me defend that is the fact that in the metaphysical aspect of your life, mm. and what I mean by that, well, there's a resonance with with yeah. who you meet, the decisions you're faced with, mm. where you are, like just where to go and what to do. You intuitively know like what feels in resonance, what feels good and what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And then in hindsight, you go, I fucking say it feels bad yeah. and you did it. You go in hindsight, you go, well, you didn't do what you knew, knew you should have done. Fucking knew it. Yeah. You know, damn it. And man, I consider myself super lucky, super fortunate. And in some way, protected and in some way on track because I mean man I think back to how many of those times how many that's how many times that's happened and I can't say that uh, here I am you know and I can't say that the consequences were as dire as they could have been um, and so that's kind of this this argument for maybe you did sign a soul contract. Maybe you did go, yes, I want these parents at this place. I want these hardships. I want this opportunity to change the world. I want, you know, I want da, 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 da. Um, do I know for sure? Yeah, dude, who knows? No. Maybe we all sign a soul contract and then the people like, uh, if we were all living up to our soul contract, the world would just... Be sunshine and rainbows, dude. <laughs> no way to know any of but, these things, but it's an interesting. See, little... this is this is where that this is where that kind of like. I don't think it's a matter of. I think it's more a matter of. Growth, and yeah. re and remembrance of where you come from, no, rather than agree. like. We've come to save. This is where. Yeah, no. This is where the. We're not like super soldiers. We're not Spartans, like sent down from above. This like, is we're... where <laughs> I think that you have this psyche break because of because of the message of what Christianity says. Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like this is almost like a Christian belief, like because uh, the like Christians don't believe in res or like a reincarnation. I should say, right? They believe in one body. And yep. like, um, and you better do it right. You yeah. better pinch your butthole tight and live uh, a perfect life before I think you go on. I think that's like elementary Christianity and yeah, there's plenty that like abide by it. But, um, you know, what I was going to say is like, it, it's that like, um, you have one, you have like your one, your one life though. And it's like, uh, you, like you really try to bring heaven to earth as long as, as much as you can for sure. within that span of time to as many people as you can. 
my, my and stuff like that. Like you're you're ushering out the kingdom is what they say, right? And like yeah, I know. think that um, the point of that, if I articulate it, is that we get wrapped up in um, if we're assuming that we are on this soul contract. Yes. Um, and that you have from some other body of, and I don't mean physical body from, un, from some other source, you have manifested your awareness here. I think it's less about let's all get together and create utopia Right. And it's more about the growth of the one visiting who is the individual. Now, it just so happens that as humans, the most potent growth is when we operate as community and as a team That's and, as a, and as a tribe. That's what I was going to say. So, it's like a- so by the – by function – of what you come here to be, utopia will create its own self. In it creates sense, right? itself out yeah, of yeah. the individual growth, right? From you being born into a world that you knew very well was going to be f- full of things that your good nature was gonna ha- had resistance against. Right. Because if there was no black in the yin and yang, if there was no evil to the good, if there was no any of that, right. You would have no ground to stand on. You wouldn't exist. Right. What would what would be the point of being good if there was only good? Well, and if we are, let's say, operating on the preopposition that the soul contract is real, right? It would only be fitting, and I think you'd probably agree with me in this, that I would choose to be here at the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something I consider all the time. It's like you know, like that would be what I choose. I mean, actually, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, that makes sense. I mean, you're literally you know, we're talking about where we're at. We're talking about Elon Musk, and we're talking about chip and brains and virtual reality, and and all. I mean, we could very well. I mean, Graham Hancock going back to <laughs> going back to these these the I mean he really the, wants me to read the, the book you the, guys <laughs> the, the old Max and, and the minds talked about that there's the there's this is like a uh this is like prophecy before I mean this is like stuff that came from stuff that they don't even they think came before the old Max. and this is also found in in Hinduism it's like the the great years right like the 432 million years um, I don't know. Like laps around the sun cal- is like calculated out to be like a. It, it's some math. It's some astronomical, mathematic equation, but like a like a great year in Hinduism represents like an age of man, the golden age, the silver age, the bronze age, the iron age. The something there's one in there, and then the iron age. I'll come back with that. But um, long story short, we're living in the we're uh, supposedly living in the final age this is like why the mayan calendar ends in 2012 right so we very well could be oh i think there's 65 ex- years left ex- experience Tops. in experiencing but every generation has said that since the dawn of time what so. if what if we're the last what if we're the last fully biological human beings i mean maybe but like every generation has said this is the beginning of time but they also didn't live with like robots living amongst them so like i yeah I really like the seventh day adventist in the 1800s that said the end of the world was coming because i went to i went to a sda school and, and they have oh man i forgot the name but they had really like one of the influential members of the church owned like a crazy amount of like acreage like a shit ton of land and I think in like 1854, that was like when they're like their pro like some chick was like this like prophet within like you know um, the Seventh Day Adventists right, um, and somebody could fact check me on this, um, but they prophesized the world was ending. He sold all of his land, all of everything. Why? 
Because he thought it was the end of the world. But why even sell it? Who cares? Because he it's wanted... It's the fucking end of the world. Who gives a fuck? Because... Guy sounds selfish and dumb. Dumb. He wanted to do like a last because last hurrah before the end of the because world? Because dumb monkeys do dumb things. <laughs> okay. And that, so he sells it all off. This is just my point. It's like... A, and, then they, and then the day, <laughs> the day comes and they're just sitting there fucking twiddling their fucking thumbs and going... like the simpsons episode wait <laughs> like the simpsons episode uh did i fuck up yeah that's super dumb yeah so yeah i mean but those people didn't have a good reason to sell off all the, to to do all that yeah because they don't have not- chips about to be implanted into their brain conscious is downloaded to some bullshit if that's even fucking real who knows maybe they're just trying to uh, is that possible? Can I mean, can you literally? They did it to it? pigs. Can you take? What, what? Oh, the consciousness thing. I don't know. No, you but can check the, the brain link, for sure. The you neuralink can, thing is like it's your brain. The neuralink thing is coming. And yeah, like, but your brain is uh, is I, physical, right? Like I don't know what I do. I don't know what I do if like they like. Um, my stance on it is like maybe in my next life I'll be like a a robot AI. Like I. Oh, I, so you do I, believe in like reincarnation? I kind of just say it like. Facetiously, like I don't fucking <laughs> know, dude. Yeah. Like, sorry, I kind of just I... say it like in a smart ass. Like, I got just, you, I got you. Like, I just like, I think I'm going to ride it out. Like, be a natural human. Be what I was born to be. Live my life. Live for vitality. Live for, the, uh, live for healthy emotions. Live to fucking, yeah, dude. to really like use I've my muscle. I've always loved and, tech, and, but I'm becoming more and more of the guy that's like, debating like running away to the forest and i never thought i was gonna be that guy but you know what if i think about every great sci-fi movie where it's like the machines are evil it's always like a guy that was like a computer programmer or something like that right like it's the guy that really knew (laughs) that like (laughs) their hands on yeah yeah, yeah. that's what the guys are i mean the guys that are in on this stuff are are talking about it they're going dude this is getting like it's getting crazy i mean they got to unplug computers at facebook because they start talking to each other and some goofy code that we'll never right. figure out i'm not saying it's time to run away to the forest but it's time to run away to the forest well <sighs> hey like and subscribe